uh, okay, so we have started the panel model. Uh, we went over the notations, uh, the different names, some textbooks, they actually call it longitudinal data set. Uh, the balanced is whenever I don't have any missing observation, we call it balanced. And of course, the opposite unbalanced if I have some missing observation. And uh, this is just to back to the same, uh, the, to the question I got last lecture about uh, whether that considers the uh, time periods outside your period of study. No, it basically considers your period of study that uh, your period of study does not have any missing observations. Okay. Um, this slide is very important. It's just giving you some idea about what are the fixed effects, okay? Whether these effects are coming through a cross section or state or country or government or people, okay? Or whether it's coming through time, okay? Because there are things that are unique to each country, unique to each state, does not change very much over time. And this is related to, um, the, the drinking and uh, driving uh, example I was talking about last time. Uh, you can think about any uh, example and try to think about what are the things that do not change over time and they are unique to each person. And um, I gave you the example for, of IQ. I give you the example of ability and motivation. And if I'm trying to uh, estimate um, the different factors affecting the final exam score. I know that the IQ of the person will not change from day one of the semester to the last day. I know that the culture of the person will not change from day one of the semester to the last day, motivation, ability, and so on. So these things are unique to each person, does not change over my period of, my period of study. When I say over time, don't consider like centuries of time, but usually consider the period of time under study. Uh, I know definitely that the IQ of the person, I know definitely that the motivation ability of the person are affecting the final exam score, but I cannot observe it and I cannot measure it. Uh, but I need to either, I have two choices, either to account for it, like include it into my regression somehow, or cancel it, okay? Because I know they are affecting my final exam. I know that they vary between people but I cannot measure it. So I have to either cancel it or capture it, okay? Um, the same thing goes for time effect. I know that there are factors that are coming for all of us. They do change over time. And because these are common for all of us, I cannot use it as a measure of, uh, uh, of measuring performance between different people. Okay, so let's say what's going on now uh, with the coronavirus. Can I use it in order to measure the performance between students um, scoring for a final exam or the, the, the difference between students scoring for assignment three? Of course not, because this is something that is common for all of us, affecting all of us during the same period of time. Okay, so I want you to try to apply what's going on now to give you like a good example of what do you mean by time effect, I usually use, or I used to give students the example of the financial crisis because it was like something that students um, were able to see, to, to feel and sense, and they were living it. Uh, how the financial crisis is a good example of uh, time effect. Time effect, uh, I mean, the financial crisis was moving over time from 2007 all the way to 2009, and it was affecting all countries of the world during the same time. Okay, uh, can I use it or can I take this uh, uh, incident and use it in order to measure differences between countries? Of course not, because it was something that was common for all countries during the same time. And the same goes with currently with, with what's going on with the coronavirus. So whether things that are fixed between, uh, I mean, unique between people do not change over time or things that are common to all people and they do change over time, I need to capture that, right? Um, I need to um, take it into my consideration because I know that they will be affecting my estimation of my coefficients and it would give me kind of unbiased results if I kind of forget about it or just ignore it. 
All right. So uh, what I'm planning to do is to continue la last uh, Tuesday's lecture. So I'm going to share with you now my iPad. Um, I, I, I used to use uh, Apple Pen and my Apple Pen for some reason decided not to work despite the fact I was like, uh, I was charging it overnight, but decided not to work. So I'm just having it again on the charger and I'm gonna use some kind of pen, which is, which is not as accurate as the Apple Pen. So you will notice, maybe you will notice that my uh, writing would be kind of not very precise. So I hope, I hope it works, okay? Um, all right, and then, uh, so we started panel. We talked about different examples. Um, one of the slides, this slide is very important because this is our outline, okay? So whenever you're lost, go back to this slide so that you know where we are. So what we did last time, okay, <clears throat> So we said that um, we need to capture the unobserved factors, right? And we have different ways of capturing unobserved factors. Like when I talking about, when I say of unobserved factors, it's actually the cross section fixed effects because the time effects are observed, right? We see them, but we need to capture them. The unobserved factors is like the things that are different between people and they can't see it. Uh, or you can say it unmeasured factors, so unobserved. And you can actually add here and unmeasured, like culture, for example. See, my handwriting is crazy. I'll try my best. Um, okay. And then uh, in order to capture these, we have different ways. We said we can cancel it so if i'm following this number one i'm just canceling it before and after regression so I'm, i have it into my regression and i'm subtracting right so i'm working with first difference so if i work with first difference first difference then i'm kind of canceling it so this is one way of doing it so one way of getting one way of uh accounting for cross-sectional fixed effects is to cancel it, get it and cancel it, okay? So you would get the first difference by canceling it. The other way is capture it. So number two is all about capturing these fixed effects, okay? So when I try to capture it, I have different ways of capturing it. I can include one column of fixed effects, and this is what we have covered last time. Okay, so we covered one column. And then I have another way of having multiple uh, columns. So when I said I have one column, so I was talking about this column, Fi. And it's kind of, think about it this way. It's like I'm giving a code to each person, unique ID to each person, unique ID to each country, right? And it's gonna take different numbers and you're free to choose whatever numbers you like, but usually we put the countries in, let's say, or the name of people in alphabetic order, and then we uh, go to our Excel sheet and then try to assign a code or an ID to each and every cross section that would satisfy the definition of cross section fixed effects that are unique to each cross section, do not change over time. So one, one, two, two, three, three, four, four. For person number thousand, it's gonna be thousand and thousand, okay, for the two years. And then uh, what I'm gonna do is you take the first difference, you cancel it. So option number one is capture it and cancel it, okay? And then, um, and a very important point to remember is the canceling here can only apply for cross section. I cannot cancel yesterday's time effect with today's time effect, right? Whatever is going on in the economy right now, which is about the coronavirus and how it's affecting the economy, I can, it's common for all of us moving over time. It's a time effect. I cannot cancel yesterday from today, but I can cancel 
the ID that is the same between yesterday and today, right? So 1980 is taking code one, 1981 is taking code one, one minus one is zero, it's gone. But for the time effects, it's not gonna be the case. So the before, the before and after regression is only applied for the cross-sectional fixed effects, all right? Um, okay, so we, we were able to remove it or cancel it by the first difference. So this is only applied when I have two uh, years, okay? The next one, which is the fixed effect. So we were talking about, this was our last slide from uh, last time, which is, okay, I'm going to create one column. And it's the same, the idea is still the same. Instead of just two years, I'm gonna have uh, more than two years. So the fixed effects regression is applied whenever I have two or more years, okay? And again, just give a unique code to each country, to each cross section, to each, student and capture this into my regression. So this is the other option is to not to cancel it, but capture it into your regression. Okay, and then I ended up the last Tuesday lecture by saying, okay, so cross section fixed effects of for Argentina is gonna be the intercept, the fixed effects of Argentina, the code for Argentina is one, it's alpha two times one. And then of course you would have some numbers for these uh, estimators and then you just add them up. So it's gonna be kind of a, just one number. And it doesn't, to have, it doesn't have to be positive, right? It could be positive, it could be negative, but just I'm just writing it in a general uh, format, okay? Um, let's go to the next. So just where is our outline? So we covered this one, we covered the one column, we will go now to the multiple columns and this one is, the multiple col columns is, is the one that you have in your assignment. So what is the multiple columns? Okay, my pen is not working, so let's try. So with the multiple uh, columns, let me try to use another pen. I keep getting different pens from textbook publishers, but they are not as good as the Apple pen. The Apple pen is very precise, especially with our coefficients and formulas. All right, so so this is uh, just so this is number. Number two, this is A. B, okay? So number B, can I try to write with black? So in number B, okay, it doesn't work, I'm sorry. Adding multiple dummies to capture fixed effects, okay? So I'm adding multiple dummies to capture uh, fixed effects. So I have two ways of doing that, okay? I can add N dummies and no intercept or and this is or I can add n minus one dummies and an intercept sorry for the terrible handwriting just try my best. Okay, and then um, what is N dummies? I'm going to give to each country a certain dummy. So let's say I'm going to have um, D1I, it's gonna take one for cross section one or country one, and it's gonna take zero otherwise. 
going to take d2i. It's going to take 1. So this is an i. And for cross section number 2, or for example, country 2, 0, otherwise. Keep going, OK? And then d n i is going to take 1 for cross section n, the very last cross section, or country n, and it's going to take 0 otherwise. OK? So I would have n dummies. And if I have n dummies, and as you can see here, if I choose to use n dummies, I have 10 countries and I have n, uh, 10 dummies, I have to cancel the intercept. Why? Because I want to avoid dummy variable trap. What is a dummy variable trap? D, V, T. The dummy variable trap is one of the sources of perfect multicollinearity. And we have already talked about that when we were discussing the uh, multicollinearity topic. So I, I need to either have the n dummies and remove the intercept or n minus one dummies and an intercept. And the idea is to avoid the dummy variable trap or DVT. So let's see, I'm going to show you here. Again, uh, the dummy variable trap is like this. I know that I have, uh, uh, let's, let's make it a, a simple, uh, let's make it a simple uh, model. See, if I'm, 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 if I'm away from the camera, I turn to a ghost, okay? So I'm just trying to be not too, too far from the camera. Okay, so dummy variable trap is like this. If I have a yi, um, beta zero plus beta one x i and and I have um, beta two d one i right and then and then I have beta three d d two i okay, plus ui. This is a very simple model, okay? And then I want you to imagine, of course, you have here the vector for the y's, y1 to all the way to yn, right? And then the betas are actually a matrix. And I've told you that before, okay? So the vector for the betas is for the beta one is actually a column of ones, okay? So this one is one, 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 one. And the thing is, if I think about this one as D one is gonna be one, and this one is gonna be zero, and if this is zero, this is one, and if this, this is one, this is zero, and so on, the linear combination, and, and this is like D1 and this is D2, the linear combination of these two is simply one, 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 one. If I do have this one here with this one here, I would create a perfect multicollinearity. okay? Why? Because I do have, and, and I'm assuming that, I assume that you just have two dummies. Okay, so this is just an assumption. I'm, I'm not saying that I have 10 countries. No, I assume that I just have two and I'm adding the dummies for country one and country two plus an intercept. This is what's gonna happen. Okay, so you want to avoid that. You want to avoid the dummy variable trap that is coming from the perfect multicollinearity between the linear combination of all the dummies I have and the intercept. So your options are, you have actually like only two options, is to either cancel this one and just work with these two, or leave this one here and leave the intercept here, right? And 
cancel one of the two. So you would cancel, let's say, just choose anyone. I'm gonna cancel this one. Okay, so you would have the, you would have just the intercept and D2. Why? Because I want to break this link. I want to break this perfect multicognat. So this is what we're doing now. We, we just, we, what we're doing now, like for our first case is, I'm showing you the case that I'm going to keep all the dummies. I'm going to remove the intercept. So let's... Uh, Can I ask you a question real quick? Yes, sure. In Stata, um, how would you remove an intercept? How, okay, so you would just type like this. Uh, regress y x comma no constant. So this way you won't have an intercept in your regression. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So let's, um, so let's continue. So if I decided to remove the intercept um, and keep just the dummies and assuming that I do have, assuming that I do have a panel model. So y, y i t is equal to beta one x i t, okay, plus, I'm gonna have delta, okay, delta one d one i plus delta two d two i, the dot of the i does not come, okay, plus, you keep going, plus delta n d n i plus u i t, okay? It's a panel model, so it has to be u i t. So in this case, I'm going to uh, have no intercept in my regression, just the x's. And of course, just I'm making it simple and just have one x, but this is not our focus now. So our focus is just on the dummies I'm just showing you. But of course you can keep adding here beta two uh, x two i plus beta three x three i and uh, it and so on. But this is not my focus now. I'm just showing you the dummies. All right. So when I ask you what is the cross section fixed effect for country one, of course I'm saying country, it could be person one, it could be government one, it could be anything, right? Um, it's simply delta one. What is the cross section fixed effect for uh, country two? It's gonna be delta two. What is the cross section fixed effects for N? It's gonna be delta N. So it's kind of straightforward, okay? So this is our first option. I personally don't like this option because I always like to have an intercept in my regression. But you would find some research papers that they would really don't care about having an intercept. So they would just estimate it uh, uh, this way and just notice that um, we can have multiple x's, right? I'm just not focusing on that now. And I just answer, and as I just answered Samantha's question, um, you basically in uh, Stata, you, you can manually override the default, okay? Just no constant towards the end comma, no constant would just remove the intercept for you. Uh, okay, so this is the first option. The second option is, uh, which I prefer, is you have an intercept, and this is the one that you have in your assignment, and n minus one dummies. I'm gonna write it with a B, dummies. Okay, so here now I have it like Y, I, T. I'm sure that you find this kind of not terribly hard. So beta zero plus beta one X, I, T. Okay, my, this pen doesn't like the dots. Okay, plus, I'm gonna have the delta 
to D to I. So I dropped the first one. Okay. Plus delta 3 D 3 I. Okay. Uh, and then you keep going. Plus the delta N D N I. All right. And then again, let's answer the same questions. What is the cross section fixed effect for country or cross section one? It's going to be equal. Okay, I don't see any delta one here. Does anyone know what is the, how can I capture the cross section fixed effects for country one? Intercept, beta zero. Exactly, so it's captured already in the intercept. Why? Because for country one, this one is zero, zero, zero. Everywhere is zero, right? I'm left with only th one thing, which is the intercept. Okay, then next, what is the cross section fixed effect for country two? It's equal to intercept plus delta two. And of course, when I estimate these, I'm going to have them like estimated, right? So um, let's assume that this is, okay, let me add the error term here because this is our population regression. I'm just made it like, just wanna make it uh, general. But next I'm going to get it as estimators, right? When I run the regression, I'm going to get it as estimators. Let me check if I have the error term. Yes, the error term is here. So. I'm just writing it in a population regression form and then you, are, you already understand that you take it and you estimate it and then get the hats. So these are the estimated cross-section fixed effects. And then the very last one, uh, cross-section fixed effect for um, country N is going to be beta hat zero plus delta hat N. You can also have a question about, can you um, check whether the cross-sectional fixed effects for country um, two is statistically significant, right? So all what you need to do is perform an F-test, right? You, do, you need to do an F-test on these specific coefficients. Uh, you can also have a question about, a general question, whether the cross-sectional fixed effects are statistically significant. Okay, so what you need to do is to perform an F test on all the uh, cross sectional fixed effects, right? So starting from delta 2 all the way to delta n. I'm going to show you that on Stata uh, right, right after I'm done uh, presenting the lecture. Okay, so let's go back to our uh, outline. So in the outline, I was. Can I ask a question though? Yes, sure. So uh, for this one, you have to add beta naught to all of them, but for the previous one, you don't add delta one yes. to LA country two. Mm -hmm. um, wh why is that the case when you remove the, the intercept versus when you add an intercept back in? It doesn't seem logical for me that you would add the cross effects for country one to country two. Cross section, okay, so here you mean you, it doesn't make any sense that you're adding this one? Yeah. Okay, that's a good question. So I want you to think about country one or whatever the country that, that you are omitting, whether it's country number 15, anyone on your list, you have to remove one of the dumps. So I want you to think about this one as your reference point. It's exactly the same way as we were interpreting the intercept before, and we have dummies, whether for um, females and Remember when we, had, uh, when we had this one as the average hourly earnings, and then we had a dummy, for example, like this one for females, and we were saying if this one is taking zero, then this is the amount of males, or like how much they earn. And if I have this one as one, then I add it to the intercept. Remember that? Yes. Okay, so what we were doing before was kind of using beta as my reference point. So if beta is equal to five, then five is for cross-section number one, uh, cross-section uh, cross uh, country one, for example, then whatever I add to it is going to be relative to 
the country one. So beta zero is equal, or beta naught is equal to five. This is the cross section for country one, okay? Now, delta two is equal to two. Then country two has a cross sectional fixed defect that is two above the cross section of country one, right? It's always in, rel in relation to uh, the omitted country or the omitted cross section. Can I ask a follow-up question then? Mm -hmm. So then this delta two is smaller than the delta two in the previous case where it's oh, just- That's a very good question. That's definitely right. Yes. Okay. It has to be by the end that they are equal. Okay. So that's a very, very good question. So uh, it doesn't have to be smaller because we don't know the sign, right? We don't know whether it's positive or negative, uh, but let's assume it's positive. If it is positive, then it has to be the case Let's assume that it's positive, okay? So it has to be the case that these two, the cross-sectional fixed defects of country two, are equivalent to this number. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So that, such that by the end, yes, as you said, the delta two here is smaller than the delta two here. So that by the end, it's giving me the same number uh, for cross-sectional fixed defects of country uh, two. Okay, and that's why I'm saying these are equivalent because when I say equivalent by the end, it's an option. So you have to choose, to, you can choose actually this method or this method because by the end, you will get the same um, results in terms of the number, in terms of the statistical significance. And that's why it's up to us to choose which one. All right, so uh, next. Okay, I was trying to find our outline. So uh, here. So what we did is, okay, we're done with this one, A and B, and then we done with N minus one dummies and no intercept and X, uh, K X's. I just gave you an example with, with K equal one, uh, and then the N dumps, okay? So what we're gonna do next is we're going to repeat this structure that you see, but for time effects. The time effect is, uh, Again, uh, is something that is going on in the economy that is coming to all of us and I need to cancel it from my regression. I need to capture it and try to estimate it in my regression, okay? So, uh, okay, so time fixed effects. So for the time fixed effects, we have actually two options. I can have one column of time dummies, or I can have multiple columns. Okay, and with the multiple columns, I have two options. Again, you know this by now, I'm sure. Uh, I can have T dummies and no intercept, or because they are equivalent again, T minus one dummies and an intercept, okay? So let's start with the first one, the one column of time dummies. Again, I'm going to give each country a uh, code. So, so for the one column, I mean not each country, each year, each uh, time period, one column of dummies. Uh, so it's gonna be like this again, our my favorite example. So this is the, uh, this is the year, okay? And this is the country, okay? And then let's say you start with Argentina, Argentina, and suppose I have only three years, and then Brazil, uh, Brazil again. And then suppose that we have this for 1980, 81, 82. 
1980, 1981, 1982. Okay. And the, of course, I have a column for the Y data set, the X data set, but I don't care about these now. Like I'm not focusing on these now. So I'm going to have a, a column. Let me call it ST where ST is gonna take one if the year 1981, yeah, sorry, one if the year 1980, two if the year 1981, three if the year is 1982, okay? So it's gonna be like one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. And if I have um, 10 countries, I keep going on like one, two, three, one, two, three, and so on. And again, the, ST follows the definition of time dimes. It's something that is common to all of us and it's changing over time. So one is different than two is different than three. And that's why when I was telling you, I can't use the first method of before and after regression or I can't do the first difference because I cannot subtract today from yesterday, right? Or I cannot like take the difference between two time periods. I can cancel it right? I can cancel it if I'm doing, like, let me show you here. I can cancel it if I'm doing the fixed effects uh, or cross-sectional fixed effects. One minus one cancels, right? One minus one, two minus two, and so on. But I can do that with the time uh, effects. All right. So this is one way of doing it. And our regression would be like, okay, I'm going to have uh, y, y i t is equal to beta naught plus beta one. Again, simple regression. So x i t plus beta three s t. Okay, plus u i t. Okay, and is then it, you skip beta two. Oh, that's my mistake. Because a friend of mine, she just called me, so I was like thinking about, I keep getting like m many phone calls since the Corona thing. So I'm lucky that my phone was silent. All right. So, uh, yes. Yeah, so the cross-sectional, uh, I mean, like for the, the time fixed effect for country one would be, can someone tell me what is the time fixed effects for country one? Time fixed effect for country one. And I need to do the same thing for country two. And I need to do the same thing. Why am Sorry, I'm saying a time fixed effect for, it's not time one, sorry, my mistake. So this is time fixed effect for time one, okay? Or year one, let me be specific because I give you an example with years. So we can think of it as year one, okay? And then for year, the very last one, T, okay? Because the time goes from one, two, three, four, all the way up to T. Okay, so can someone tell me what is the time fixed effect for year one? Is it or not? Mm hmm. And? Plus beta two ST. Exactly, and then if the ST is taking one, for year one, then multiply times one. Yeah, so it's, you're gonna end up by, by saying, okay, it's beta naught plus beta two, and of course all these have like with hats. And I'm sure that uh, following the same methodology, so it's just beta naught plus beta two, two, okay? And um, and then the same thing here. So whatever the last beta zero plus beta hat uh, two, 
and whatever the very last one so i'm gonna i'm gonna just type t but if, if the last one is t here equal 20 okay then this one is gonna be like you multiply it times whatever the value so let's say 20 okay so you end up by getting just a one number all right so this is one way of doing it the other way which is um what did i call it one and two okay so number two so i'm the adding the multiple uh time dummies all right and then uh, let's do the first one number a we're doing it as no intercept and t dummies so it's going to be like y i t plus equal beta one x i t plus let me have it as lambda one uh, d one t okay because it moves with the time okay plus delta 2 d 2 t and then you keep going plus delta t capital t d capital t t small t okay so where i know that just if you're confused the t the small t is my period time period that starts from one two, three, four, five, six. Let me, because I know that you're, I know that students get confused with the T, a small letter T and, okay, two, three, keep going. The very last one is capital T. So capital T is my very last year, okay? So what you have here is, this is the coefficient for the first year, the coefficient for year number two or period time period number two and this is the coefficient for the very last one okay so when i ask you okay what is the uh, let me erase this because i don't want to leave the slide so okay i hope that you have written that already so so the question would be okay uh, what is the cross-section fixed effect for time or for year one or time period one? So I'm not going to keep on writing years because you might be working with months, you might be working with weeks, right? So time period one, my example that I gave you, the very simple Argentina example is just in years, so whatever, you can write it as year one. Um, this one would be, uh, do you know what is the answer for this one? Wait, do you mean the cross-section fixed effect or the time fixed effect? Or yes. My mistake, I'm sorry. Okay, so time, the time fixed effects, you're right. So, it's straightforward. What about for period one? Is it lambda one? Yeah, because the answer is too simple, so you might be like, okay, what she's answer what she's asking us, right? I hope that it's straightforward, okay? Any question? Any question? Okay. So the next one would be that, okay, I'm adding an intercept. So number B is you have an intercept. Okay, and T minus one time dummies. And it's gonna be, I'm sorry, my handwriting is not good. So Y I T is equal to beta zero plus beta one X I T plus 
lambda 1 t 1 t sorry just a small letter t okay t shouldn't you be skipping a t value t minus one dummies yeah, yeah i don't know what's going on with me today i'm focusing on okay so let me use uh, lambda 2 d 2 t plus lambda 3 d 3 t and then you keep going plus lambda capital T d capital T small letter t okay and then again what is the time fixed effect for time period one okay time fixed effect for time period two time fixed effect for time period capital t okay now i do have an intercept right for time period one is beta naught yeah, so it's going to be just the intercept uh, to relative to period one. I want to see the value for period two. And then relative to period one, I'm going to add the coefficient for the very last year. Okay. And again, the same goes with the uh, question about statistical significance. If I'm asking you statistical significance for statistical significance for time fixed effects for period two, then you would need to perform an F test on these two together. If I'm just asking you about the time fixed effect for period one, whether statistically significant, just check the intercept. Okay, uh, that is statistic p-value, confidence interval, whatever. All right, so what we're going to do next is combining. So now I always need to capture fixed effects that are uh, unique to each cross section, does not change over time. And I also want to capture the fixed effects that are moving over time and are common for all of us. So in order to capture these two, we need to combine these dummies together in one model. And again, I'm going to be just using one X, but you can always expand the model by using multiple uh, X's. So uh, now when I'm combining fixed effects, whether these are cross section fixed effects with time fixed effects, and this is what we, what we usually do in um, in real life, like when you want to go estimate a model that is panel, you actually need to include them, like you start by including them, and then you can test after that whether you actually need it or not. Same way as we do any other uh, coefficient, you just perform statistical significance in order to determine what, whether I actually need it or not. So the model would be kind of relatively complicated, but just it's it's combining all the pieces that we have just covered. So the model would be like yit is equal to, so let's uh, do it with an intercept, okay? With an intercept. So I'm going to have an intercept because I, this is like the more commonly uh, way used method, but we can always repeat without the intercept. Uh, and then beta one xit, plus, I'm gonna start from delta two, d two i, okay, so this is the cross section of fixed effects, delta three, d three i. I have a problem with the dot for the i, so I'm just trying my best, okay. And then, okay, keep going, and then delta n, D N I plus I'm gonna start the time effects. Um, I'm gonna use anything delta two D two T 
okay? So I have two I and I have two T, one that moves through cross sections and one that moves through time, plus delta three D three T, plus, we keep going, the very last one is delta capital T D capital T sub small t plus u i t. Okay? So if I'm asking you, okay, what is the cross uh, section fixed effects and time fixed effects for uh, cross section one or country one or person one, whatever. And let me say country for country one and period or year one equal. What do you think? It's just, just the intercept. The just the intercept. The yes. So it's just going to be beta zero. That's it. Okay. Next. What is the cross section fixed effects for? Two. Two. Okay. So this is two. Two. So it's going to be beta naught plus delta two hat plus lambda two hat. Any question? It doesn't have to be two two, right? So I can be asking you, okay, what about the period T? So I'm going to be, if this is period T, then this one would be T, okay? So we can have different combinations. Um, let's uh, see, okay, whatever, what about the very last country, the very last year? So this is country N, period N, uh, p uh, period T, right? So this one would be, just make it nicer. Okay, so this one N, this one is delta T. So this one would be cross-sectional fixed effects for the very last country, the very last year. Uh, so you would be just adding up all these coefficients, could be positive, could be negative, right? And, uh, and then you'll be getting just one number, okay? Uh, you can have a question as of whether uh, I really need the time effects or whether I really need the cross-section fixed effects. So statistical significance for the cross-sectional Fixed effects, okay? So whether you want actually both. So I have captured them and whether I actually need them or not. If they turn out to be insignificant, right? So if these are statistically insignificant, you conclude that, just remove them. You don't need them, okay? And this would go, uh, this actually goes whether I'm talking about the combination of both or separately. So if you have a question about whether do we need fixed effects? So if I'm saying fixed effects, I'm talking about, so fixed effect can be cross section, can be time. So whether I'm asking you, do we need fixed effects? You would go ahead and perform an F test. So this would be F test. So you would perform an F test on all the group of dummies in order to determine whether these are statistically significant, keep them, um, and whether they are insignificant, remove. So if they are significant, you just, uh, same to what we have been doing so far, statistically significant, keep them, I need them in the model. I can be doing that for uh, just a question on time effects or just a question on cross-sectional fixed effects. So it could be like different ways of, it might be the case that I don't need time, but I need cross-section or I, I don't need cross-section, but I need time, okay? And a couple of things to note here is, um, yes, question? 
Yeah, I had a, a quick clarification question. So if you're only asking whether or not we need, say, time-fixed effects, are we going to only run an F-test on the dummies corresponding to the time-fixed effects? So Correct. Like yes. So you would be doing an F-test on the ones that are related to the time. This one, this one, okay. this one. Okay. Yeah. So if this is the question about uh, time effects. If the question about cross-sectional only, then this one, this one, this one. If it is about all of them, then you just all the dummies oh. together. Yeah, in one test. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And of course, a couple of things to remember if I'm asking you about the number of restrictions, again, the number of dummies to be tested, the number of restrictions, if I'm just doing it on the time dummies, it's going to be right starting from here. So it's going to be like T minus one dummies, T minus one restrictions. If I'm asking you about uh, uh, whether the cross-sectional fixed effects are needed, then how many dummies, how many restrictions are going to be n minus one restrictions? Because I'm going to have n minus one coefficients to be tested um, under the null hypothesis of the F statistic. So I'm sure that this is like the number. Um, I mean, like this uh, a point is not. Uh, hard to understand because we have done a couple of things or many actually things related to the F test before. The other important point I want you to notice is, suppose I have, I'm just um, giving you an example, suppose I have, or I'm performing a, test, uh, I'm performing a model, a uh, panel model on 140 countries, 140. So this is 140. And the time is whatever, suppose I'm talking about 20 years. I wanted to imagine how many dummies we have in this regression. We would have 140 minus one, I'm gonna have 139 dummies to be estimated, right? So I'm gonna here have uh, 139 uh, for the D, D, N, and then I'm gonna have, right? Uh, 19 time dummies. So this one would be just too much, right? So this is, this is the cross-sectional dummies and this one, the time dummies. So this is too much. I want you to imagine that all of a sudden you're including into your regression 139 for the cross section one uh, and 19 for the dummies. If I have, and this is very important because I'm currently um, grading your projects. I have actually submitted the, uh, the grading to a couple of uh, projects so far. I'm going to continue this today. So one of the projects that I have already graded and I have sent my feedback to students is it's a panel study and there is a large number of countries. It's not advisable that you use that large number of dummies. If I have large number of countries, it is better to use our first option, which is just one column, okay? So if you have a large set of countries, then go ahead and use the one column. And then in that one column, if I have 139, or I mean, if I have 140 countries, then the ST is gonna go from 111, Two, 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 all the way up to 140, 140, 140, right? So use the, I'm sorry, I'm talking about the time, sorry. I'm, I'm, I should say that I'm talking about the cross section. So let me go back here. So if I'm talking about the cross section, okay, I'm here. If I'm having 130, nine countries, then use just one column, okay? So it's gonna be repeated. One, 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 two, 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 and so on, all the way up to 140, 140, 140, okay? The same thing for the time dummies. If I have a large number of time dummies, then just use the one column, okay? Because the one column would be just one coefficient to be estimated. And if I have uh, 20 years, then it's gonna be like, one, two, three, four, all the way up to 20, then copy paste to the next country, right? One, one to 20. So it's one to 20 is going to be repeated for each country. And again, by the end of the day, I'm just going to have one coefficient instead of 19 coefficients. Is that clear?
Any question? Hi, Professor. I want to know how, how can you determine the number of the FI? For, uh, for example, for the cross-sectional fixed effect, if it's the uh, if the country is number one country, does that mean the FI for that country is one or, or it's just uh, any number? Yeah, so as I said at the beginning, so let me just go here uh, to you're talking about, for example, this one. Yeah, it's any number. Make your own number, okay? So mm -hmm. you basically what we do is you just, if I have uh, <clears throat> my data set is already arranged in my Excel sheet, let's say by alphabetic order, for example, you just create a column and then just give the country, each country a number. Okay. Uh, so, so, the count, so the number is also collected by some data set and we can get the uh, own feature of that country? You mean the FI? Yeah. No, 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 uh, this is something that you created yourself. So you go to your Excel sheet, you just insert a, an empty column and then you keep like manually, right? Insert one, 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 two, 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 and so on. Oh, uh, so, so we just need to make sure that for, for the uh, one country, all the time we, uh, we input the same number. Yes, and we exactly. And to, uh, oh, I see. Okay, so that's why it's, uh, it's, you just follow the definition. The definition is of, of, the, of fixed effects. Let's say if I'm talking about cross-section, I just need a number for each country that is unique, that is different from any other country on my list, and that does, does not change over time. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. And the same goes with the time effects. Like you would not be looking at any statistical website to give you this. No, you just insert an additional column that takes one for uh, like one unique ID for each country and it's repeated for the other countries on the list. Okay, I see, mm -hmm. got it. Any other question? Yeah, I have a question. Mm -hmm. So if we were to uh, test the significance for the one column, how would you do that if it's just a singular? Variable. Yeah, you just follow the t-statistic, that's it. So the t that you would have just, um, uh, the question in that case would be whether I need time effects or not. And to answer that, you would just check the t-statistic, that's it. Do you get that? Yes. Mm -hmm. Any other question? Uh, I have another question about the dummy variable trap. Uh, I remember that uh, if we have no intercept, so all the dummies, the uh, all the intercept of the dummy, the sum should be one, right? Mm -hmm. uh, if we have one intercept and uh, n minus one dummies, is there any relationship between the better one, a uh, better zero, and all the other intercept of the dummies? Mm -hmm. Should be some uh, as one or so. Let me go back here. Okay. So you would have like something like I'm not hundred percent sure I understand your question, but let me just explain this again. So if I have the matrix for the betas, the matrix for the betas would be um, the first one is the one for the beta node, one, 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 one. If, I'm, if I have D2, D3, for example, I have only three dummies, then if this is one, this is zero, but D, and of course I have like D1 in the background, it's not inside my regression. So, and this one would be also zero. But what if this is one is one, so both are zero, right? If this is one and this is zero and this is zero. So the linear combination of these two doesn't have to be a column of one, right? Because one plus zero is one, zero plus zero is zero, zero plus one is one. So it's one, zero, one, instead of being one, 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 if I included D1. Oh, I know. Do you that. get that? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's the idea. So you can either just forget about this one, right, which is the, 
uh, intercept. And in that situation, I can just take this column, uh, which is for the D1, and just include it in my regression. So I'm going to have here D1 that is 0, 1, 0. And their linear combination is a column of 1, yes, but it is not correlated with anything included in my regression. Okay, got it. All right. Any other question? I have another question about the F test, for example, for uh, for a certain country about the cross-sectional effect. Uh, so how how can you do the F test for an intercept and the and and one dummy? Okay. So, so how for for this data, how can you read read the? Uh, which date? Uh, you mean in general, a general question, right? Uh, yeah, I remember that it's a, uh, there is a test for, uh, for the, uh, for the, uh, time fix effect, for example, for, for year one, uh, that should be beta zero plus, uh, beta of, uh, at, and the num test. Okay, I got it here. Is this one right? Yeah, yeah. This one. Uh, I just uh, I intercept and t minus one dummies and the time fix effect for time period two. Oh yeah, that's it. Uh, mm -hmm. How can we do the f test for the intercept and the dummy? The I mean, intercept and the, like for example in number two, uh, beta. In the intercept yeah. plus delta two, right? Is that your question? Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So you, you, you know that uh, the intercept has the T statistic already in your output, right? Do you, like there is a way that you can determine the statistical significance of this one, right? You have a T statistic for it. You have a P value for it. You have a confidence interval for it, right? Hello? Are you with me? Guys, where are you? Hello? Uh, yeah, no, I got it. Okay. <laughs> Is, was there a bad connection or something? Because I felt like you you gone. The internet connection is just uh, blocked down. Oh, are you, are, you, are you in the US or? Uh, uh... No, I'm in China now. Oh, okay. Yeah, I got like a couple of emails from students telling me that they have bad connection. Um, okay, did you get it? Uh, actually, I missed what you have said. Okay, yeah, so I was telling you that, do you know already that you can find the statistical significance of the intercept, right? Yeah, uh, how, how can I? Like you have it in the output. It's the same way that we usually uh, evaluate or analyze the, whether the intercept is statistically significant or not. So you have the T statistic, you have the P oh. value, you have the confidence oh, okay. interval for it, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So let's say if I'm asking you cross section fixed effects for country two is the intercept and the coefficient delta two. How can I determine whether these are jointly statistically significant? So what you can do is just take the average of the T statistic, right? T stat the, mm -hmm. the, the F statistic, you take like the T statistic squared of each and take their average. It would give you the F statistic of these two coefficients. Right. Uh, so, yeah, so it's basically uh, you can do it manually, right? Uh, uh, if you have a question about a specific country and I'm going to show you that. Okay. okay? I'm going to show you on uh, using uh, Stata. So before I do that, let me share with you quickly your assignment. Your assignment. Okay. Um, where is your assignment? Is right here. So,
Okay, so the first one here, I think by now you can actually finish this. So what we have is a model that is a panel, okay? An estimation over a period of year for 50 states. And we have um, the population regression uh, model, okay? And yeah, and you have here the, see, you have 50 states but we have started from D2, okay, all the way to 50. And we have the time, 13 periods, but we, again, we have started from two. So this model is a model where I have an intercept and N minus one dummies and T minus one dummies, okay? So uh, I want you to, what you need to do is, uh, yeah, the first one is just you need to name possible factors that can be picked by time effect and uh, cross-sectional fixed effects, just come up with any factors. I'm sure that what's going on in the economy is a good example for time effect, okay? But there are other things that can be picked also up by the cross-sectional fixed effects. We have seen some countries are affected by the virus and others are not as much. You can probably try to figure out something that is unique, for example, about New York versus other states, and this would capture for you the uh, fixed effects. Mm -hmm. uh, again, what are the state and time fixed effects for state one year, one state four year, 10 state 50 year 13? What we have done in today's class would make this easy question. But just stop me if you have any question, okay? Now, uh, using the panel regression with time fixed effects only, okay, so in this regression number two, we have decided to remove the, the fixed effects. So you have time dummies from two to 13, okay? You need to interpret the results of only three regressors, and you need to write down the null and the alternative hypothesis to test the statistical significance for time dummies, okay? So you need to test the statistical significance of this part. And um, you can call the coefficients here, whatever delta two, you can call this one delta 13, right? Uh, so you just need to write down the null and the alternative hypothesis of this uh, F test. And then I'm giving you assumption that the F test is equal to this number using 5% statistical uh, significance level, I want you to, to, to determine whether we need time effects or not. And tell me why. Any questions so far? Guys, any question? Okay. Um, and then next, so, I, so far you can do A, B, C. Let's see D. Um, now you want to add the cross-section back, okay? Cross-section fixed effects back. You uh, re-estimated the model, okay? And um, I'm asking you if there is any important changes in the three regressors. So I want you to remember that if I notice any change in coefficients, right, then it must be, it must, have been the case that it was absorbing some omitted variables, okay? So I wanted to see, to, to determine whether these were absorbing any variables when I have included back the cross-sectional fixed effects. So you need to think about that. You need to write down that the null and alternative hypothesis of the cross-section and time fixed effects. How many restrictions under the F-test? And again, I'm giving you an F-test and I'm asking you whether I need both the cross-section and time fixed effects and which model do you prefer, two or three and why. Okay, so, so far you can do up to here. Let's say, let's see the very last one. I have already informed you that one of the disadvantage of using this type of model when I have 50 states, 13 years, uh, is that I have so many parameters to be estimated. I, I might run out of degrees of freedom if I have a small data set. So the better option is to try to minimize the dummies as much as possible. Uh, one, uh, one thing that I uh, discussed um, 
maybe 10 minutes ago, is that just if I have a large number of cross sections, just add one column to capture the cross section fixed effect. If I have a large number of years, I'm not using two years, three years, I have 13 years here, then I better have just one column that would capture the fixed effects. So here there is another option. What about if I group the states into eight, eight regions? So instead of having um, 50 states, right? I'm going to have 40, uh, I'm going to have eight regional dummies, okay? So the question is, what is the advantage of this method? I have already mentioned that while, while I'm talking about. And what is the implicit? There must be an assumption such that I'm going to group people, uh, not people, to group states together. So what could be the possible assumption made by the author so that the author can group these countries together instead of having like all the states, I'm just going to have just eight regions to represent the cross-sectional dummies. All right, so based on today's lecture, uh, you can actually finish the whole, the, like the whole question one, okay? And you already covered this part, the linear probability model probability logic, so you can, actually start just working on the on the assignment you, you we have covered everything and in tomorrow's recitation you will have a panel model and uh, both a state question and a non state question i was like uh, hoping that i have the time to show you on state but what time is it it's uh, oh my god it's already 57 so okay so let's stop here and then um, if you have any question, you can sign up for office hours or uh, or uh, or uh, uh, type on the discussion form. All right, I'll see you next week and uh, have a great weekend. Okay, bye. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Bye. You'll be having your office hours in fifteen minutes. Yeah. All right. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Sure.